Hi everyone, I am Dan Elliott and welcome to the DokiPen channel. Now we'll be taking a bit of a departure from the usual wrangle of UVs and shader parameters and instead we'll spend a few minutes adding a quick particle sim to this effect to help make it a bit more impactful. To make this a quick process, I'm going to take an existing particle system from the starter content and modify it for our purposes. If you navigate to the starter content particles folder, you'll see an asset called p underscore explosion. I'm going to duplicate this and rename it to p underscore damage hit. Then I'll move it into the damage folder that we've been working in. I'll open up the cascade editor and you can see that there are various emitters and modules here contributing to this effect. But first, what we probably want to do is spawn the particle system at the hit location whenever the line trace hits the mesh. If we go into the character blueprint, right after the hit through a false branch, we can create a spawn emitter at location node. This node simply takes the asset you want to spawn and spawns it at a particular location, rotation and scale that you give it. So we'll take the location of the hit and feed it into the particle spawn location. And for the rotation, this is interesting because the hit location only provides us with a normal vector and the spawn node is expecting a rotation type. So we can in fact plug in the normal vector to a rotation type. Unreal will convert the type by inserting this rotation from X vector node. Hitting play, we can see nothing happens, but that's probably because we forgot to set the asset. So let's go to the spawn node and set the emitter template to our P underscore damage hit. And now, boom, that is definitely an explosion happening at the hit location. I'm not really going for an explosion here. I want it to be more of a dust hit, like this is concrete being broken up. Let's modify the particle system then. And I'm not expecting you to be proficient in the cascade editor here, but everything I do will be pretty straightforward, so hopefully you can follow along. There are these separate emitters along the top here, which are responsible for a different kinds of particles being emitted and we can switch them off with this toggle. I basically want to switch them all off except the smoke emitter. Now in the smoke emitter in the spawn module, I want to scroll down to the burst list, which controls how many particles get spawned when the particle system enters the world. I want to increase this count of three to four to make it slightly more dense. Then in the color over life module, we can look at the curve which controls the color as the particle lives its life from birth to death. It's got these two points, of which point zero is the first point, which is the color at the beginning of the particle's life, and point one, which is the color at the end. I want to change it to remove the orange glow. So I'll make point zero a mid gray value of point five in all three components. And the second point, I'll make it fade slightly to a darker point three. Now the alpha curve controls the opacity of the smoke, and we can see that there are three points, with point zero being zero opacity at the in value of zero, which is the particle lifetime at zero, to the opacity going all the way up to a fully opaque one at point one, which is 10% of the particle's lifetime. And I want to change it to point zero one so that the particle becomes opaque very quickly at just 1% of the particle's lifetime. Otherwise it takes too long to fade into view but the opacity I want to be 0.5, so that's half transparency. And the third point, we can leave it at zero for the end of the particle's life. Next, I wanna change the lifetime of the particles. Expanding the distribution of the lifetime, we can see that they currently last between two and three seconds. I'll change that so that some of them have a shorter lifespan with a minimum of one second. Now in the game, they're looking okay, but a bit transparent still. But that isn't because of the opacity curve we set. It's actually due to a setting in the material. If we go to the cascade editor and click in the required section of the emitter, we'll get shown the material that the particle system is using. I'll double click to open up the editor for that material. And there's this depth fade node, which is connected to the opacity. And what this node does is it sees how far the pixel is from another surface and outputs a value from one to zero the closer it gets. So in this case, there's a fade distance of 150 
which means that as the particle that this material is applied to gets near another surface within 150 units, then the output of this node will go from 1 to 0, because this is connected to the opacity slot, which will get less opaque near that surface. This is useful because it hides areas where the large particles cut through the surface, which looks like there are artifacts, and that will destroy the illusion that it's smoke. So let's change that to 50 units, so that it will be only very close to the surface that it becomes transparent. We'll have a look at that, and it's definitely clearer and more opaque, but it could probably be made more opaque overall. So I'll go back to the particle editor and tweak that color over life alpha curve so that instead of having a value of 0.5 at its peak over its lifetime, it goes up to 0.8 opacity before fading out. And that's looking good enough for me. But the dynamics, I think, could be tweaked slightly. Right now, the particles puff out and kind of stay where they are, but it would be good to get a bit more directionality to this, as if they're coming out of the wall with some force. This can be done in the cascade editor with the initial velocity module, which, as it sounds, sets the velocity of the particle initially when it's spawned. So right now, the particles are birthed with a distribution where they will get random value between these two vectors, which are currently just 10 and 25 units in the z direction. I'll change that spread to go from 20 to 40. I'll crank that up to 120, but in the x direction, which is the direction that is coming out of the surface. Now, when we try this, you can see that the particles really pop out and look like they've been caused by the surface being hit. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how we can appropriately choose the right size render target resolution, depending on the size of the object hit, so that areas that are really large get a lot of resolution, and areas that are really small get low resolution render targets. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.